I forgot to answer the question. Okay, and hey guys, it's Sabrina Potter, and I'm coming at you from the floor of my new room. <laughs> that today I would speak to you guys about something that I've gotten a lot of questions about and that is DTS. DTS is something that I've been doing for the first five and a half months of this year and it was an amazing experience. I loved it so much. I'm going to be telling you guys about some of the questions that I had before I went, some of the questions that I've been asked when I came back and then I'm going to give you a little tiny bit of a taster from my two notebooks from my time on DTS. So I'm really excited to show you that. But yeah, so the first question that I'm always asked is what does DTS stand for or what is DTS? So DTS formally stands for Discipleship Training School, but on the inside we like to say that it stands for Die to Self. And that is just because in your time on DTS, you learn about how to die to self and really lay it all down at the feet of at the foot of the cross and like become the person that God created you to be and not the person that the world has taught you to be. So that is something that I really, really love. Okay, another question that I'm asked is what does DTS consist of? So basically DTS has two separate phases. The first phase is called the lecture phase and that is usually about three months in most DTSs. And in the lecture phase, you learn about certain topics. So on our DTS, we learned about the Holy Spirit for one week. We learned about the Father Heart of God, hearing the voice of God, the different names of God, and a lot more topics. But those were some of the bigger topics that I really loved. Um, the speakers were amazing. I loved them all so much. Um, one of the guys was actually really close to my age, which made it so like interesting to see someone who's still young and is living this out because it's really nice to hear from people that are wiser because they've been alive for longer than you <laughs> but when you hear of someone who is around your age they sort of understand the issues that you're currently dealing with and that really helped me that week so DTS has a second phase and that is called the outreach phase basically the outreach phase is a missions trip and I'm not sure how other DTSs do it, but in our DTS, we had a list of five to six different places that we could go, and each and every person had to pray about it, and then we would write down on a piece of paper which country God told us to go to. Um, one of the countries that God told me to go to was Malawi, and we ended up going to Malawi and Zambia. So I was so happy because I was so like nervous. What if it's just my voice? It's not actually God. Because those are some of the questions that you ask yourself when you are starting to hear the voice of God is sometimes, is it just my voice or is this the voice of God? Like, how do you know? Um, but <laughs> that was definitely a confirmation for me in that time that I was hearing the voice of God because I think there was about 13, no, there was a lot of votes for Malawi. I think it was a majority vote because we ended up going which means even more people heard Malawi and we didn't discuss it because everyone was like I want to see if I'm hearing God's voice or if it's my head so let's not talk about it I don't want to know what you are thinking I want to think about it myself you know so it was really great to get that kind of confirmation about hearing the voice of God so yeah another question that I get asked a lot is where is DTS now this is the kind of question that you can't really answer because DTS isn't in one place. DTS is a course that is run by an organization called YWAM and that stands for Youth with a Mission. So basically Youth with a Mission um, is under the University of Nations who you can also look up um, and they operate worldwide. So when I was looking at my DTS um, I actually was interested in it because of one of the girls that I knew who did a DTS in Honolulu, Hawaii. and. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, at first that's what got me interested because of Hawaii. Um, but they also have DTSs in Australia, New Zealand, China, anywhere that you can think of, there will be a DTS. So my DTS was in Cape Town. Um, it was in Durbanville, but my base recently moved to Musenberg. 
So yeah, I'm not sure if the base is set up yet because they moved while we were on outreach. In fact, let's see. If I Google DTS with YWAM, let's see which location comes up first because I guarantee you it is literally worldwide. Doesn't matter which country you're in, there will be a YWAM near you, like genuinely. So let's see. YWAM DTS. My friend is about to staff um, a DTS in Costa Rica, which is so exciting because <laughs> Costa Rica is so beautiful and I wish I could go. Um, Los Angeles YWAM DTS is the first one that came up. The second one is Colorado. The third one is Wireless Switzerland. I know I have some viewers in India, I think it was. There is a DTS in India. It doesn't say where in India though. There's one in Bangalore. There's one in Lonavala. I'm not sure how to say that. Um, there's one in Delhi. So there's a DTS pretty much anywhere in the world basically is the point. Is how long is DTS? So my DTS was five and a half months, but I think it's usually six months long. Why would you go and do a DTS? So I had a whole bunch of time off and I wanted to fill it with something. And so I thought doing a DTS will be a good idea just to fill the time. But when I went, I realized that it was so much more than just filling some time. It was a life-changing experience and it really formed the way that I see the world now and the way that I view everything in my life. I mean, the way that I speak changed, the way that I think has changed. Everything about me has been reborn and has changed so incredibly and I'm so grateful for that experience. So also it helps with your relationship with God and what that really like is what it means to have a relationship with God and what Christianity really means what it's really about because Christianity is not a religion it's a relationship with God and that is something that I learned on DTS because before I thought that it was just about being a perfect person you have to be good enough you have to be pretty enough and all of this stuff but it's not about that it's just about God and you and your relationship and I love that so much so that's one of the reasons I would do a DTS again, or I would start the DTS. And now I thought it would be nice if I can give you guys a taster from my notebooks. So what I did is I went through the pages and I numbered every single page in my two no notebooks and I wrote the numbers on a piece of paper in this bag. So I'm going to choose four pieces of paper and from each page that is chosen, I'm going to read one to two sentences for you guys. So the first one is 108. Okay, 108 is devotions that were run by Vicky and Joa. So what happens during DTS is, I think it's once a week we had devotions and it was run by one of us. Like we would get put in pairs um, and we would have to run a devotions together. The first thing that I like here is that it says, God is unpredictable, which is so true because people even ask me like, if God was real, why would he do this? But it is because like things happen in life and you can't predict what God is going to do or what is going to happen in your life. But the best thing is that sometimes bad things happen to us, but we learn such amazing things from them and they prepare us for a future situation. And so that is one way that God works in an unpredictable way. God is mysterious, guys, and who doesn't like a bit of mystery? I mean, come on, how many of us watch CSI or whatever, you know? <laughs> like, we all love mystery, and God is a mysterious guy. I really love this. It says, you have your plans for your life. You know what you want to do. But what about my plans for you from the Lord? And that was, I think that was actually a word that God spoke to me during devotions separate from what they were saying and that it just has to do with your calling and the way that your life is going because we like to plan. We humans love to plan our lives out. A, B, C, one, two, three. We know everything that's going to happen in the next few months and we want to plan it out perfectly as it ideally works in our heads. But God has a plan for us too and sometimes we forget to consider his plan for us. Okay, page two, we're skipping to the beginning. One thing that I like is that we humans are garbage in, garbage out people. 
And a lot of people like to say that we're not, but truly we are. Like, even as babies, we're garbage in, garbage out people. I mean, garbage in, garbage out, if you're unfamiliar with that phrase, Gigo is actually a IT phrase that I know. Um, and it means that whatever is input comes out again at some point. And I mean, it's very true because as a baby, you hear people speaking around you and then you start to speak. But how do you learn to speak? By listening to other people. So as people speak into you, you learn how to speak out again. You know, so we are Gigo people. Don't deny it. <laughs> Denial is just an admission that it's the truth. Is page 135. There is one last promise for God to fulfill. The second coming of Christ. And no one knows when this will happen. We can be sure of one thing though. Jesus will return and we don't know when. So that is sort of something that I think is really nice for people that are in a hopeless situation and feel like they don't know anything or they're not worth anything. At least we know that the one thing we can be sure of is that Christ is going to come back again and we're not sure when. And yeah, not being sure when might be an unsure thing, but at least we are sure of the fact that we are unsure <laughs> and that we will forever be unsure until He comes. Um, and also the idea that Christ is coming back for you and me, like it doesn't matter who it is, like Jesus isn't going to turn around one day and be like, you know what? The earth is so dirty. I don't like those people. I just, I'm never going back. I don't feel like it. Like, he's never going to turn around and say that. He is going to come back. Um, because he loves us. So, yeah. This is not on that page, but I just love it. It says, I am living for something greater than myself. So, I'm going to be fearless. And I love that. Okay. So, this is going to be our last page that we will look at. Okay, page 66. Is worship and surrender weak? This was the week with the guy who was close to our age. This was one of the weeks that I absolutely loved because he is insane. He's absolutely crazy and I seriously aim to be like that. Like that is one of my goals. Like, whew, inspiration. So anyways, um, he knows a lot of facts and it's crazy some of the things that he knows. Like I don't even understand how he knows these things. This is something that I really love, and this is something that he said that we should declare over ourselves every single day. If you're feeling not good, if you're not feeling good, if you are feeling insecure, if you're worried about something, if you have something coming up and it makes you nervous, this is something that you should say over yourself that I need to start saying of myself more, and that is, I am good. I am made in the image of God. And that's because you are. You are made in the image of God. We are all made in the image of God. And that is so beautiful because God is love and God is fulfilling and God really fills us up. And truly without God, I feel like I personally am nothing. Um, that's just something that I admit to myself. This is also something that I love, love, love because this helps me fight against the spirit of religion. I hate the spirit of religion. It really, it grates my cheese. I literally can't do it around people with the spirit of religion. Like, those people, they make me want to cry and be angry at the same time. Like, the spirit of religion, get out right now. You are not welcome here. <sighs> Basically, it says, Jesus came to fulfill the law. He didn't come to destroy them. Okay? So, we have to... Like, there are the Ten Commandments, which Jesus fulfilled. So, obviously, we have to follow them. But if you don't, if you, like, fail at following every single one perfectly and the great... I mean, I don't think you guys understand how many rules there are in the Bible. I think I heard someone say that there were, like, 136 or something like that. If we were to be able to follow 136 rules every single day, we would be perfect people, but we are not perfect people. There is no way I'm going to follow 136 rules every single day. That's unrealistic for me, okay? So luckily, Jesus fulfilled those rules. And what I've learned is that when you strive to follow those rules, it means that you are saving yourself from so much pain. Because think about it. 
the Ten Commandments, one of the commandments says, um, do not commit adultery. Now, adultery is, speak, is sleeping with multiple partners. Um, and, like, just think about if you are a married couple and you find out that your wife or your husband is sleeping with someone else, that's committing adultery. How much pain is that going to cause you? Like, and how much pain is that going to cause her in the future, her or him in the future, you know? I learned that God doesn't want us to sin, not because He wants to hold us back, not because He's saying, don't have fun, like, don't go out drinking, whatever. It's not because God wants to hold us back from earthly fun things, like drinking, or whatever. It's because there is so much pain that comes with some of those things. And He wants to save us from the pain of the repercussions of our actions. And so yes, we strive to follow the 135 rules or whatever amount it is. But that doesn't mean that you're ever going to be perfect. So you have to forgive yourself, but you also have to follow those rules. And the spirit of religion for me is when people get too like, Oh, I need to read my Bible every single day or else I'm a bad person. Or I need to be a good person. I need to look a certain way and like, Make sure that I dress really, like, don't make anyone stumble, like, there's just some things that are a bit too much that become the spirit of religion when it comes to following rules. And so, when it says Jesus came to fulfill the law, he didn't come to destroy them. It means follow them because you are children of God and because you don't need to experience the pain of some of the things that come out of not following these laws. But it's okay, you're okay. Don't have a panic attack if you like accidentally do something that is in the rules that you shouldn't be doing. One of them is sacrifice, animal sacrifice. We don't do that anymore. We Christians don't go out killing animals to give them to God to fix our mistakes anymore because God gave us his very own son and sacrificed his very own son for us to cover our mistakes so that we don't have to go out killing animals cover our mistakes. So I think that's just really beautiful. Another thing is what you look at and what you focus on is what you will be. So anyways, that's my taster from my lecture phase book. I didn't get anything from my outreach book. I'm so sorry guys. This thing did not want my outreach book to be on the internet. So <laughs> that's all for today. Thank you so much for coming and listening to me speaking. I look forward to seeing you guys soon. I love you so much. Thank you so much for stopping by. Bye!